Uh, my name is Jason G. Um, my work is um, data authentication uh, architect. I have users. Okay. Uh, I have business to build their uh, data application system from uh, data infrastructure to the data analysis platform. And also, I part time made, uh, I'm teaching at the USC, uh, University of Southern California. Um, Before that, uh, I worked for Symantec for many years uh, as a big data engineer and also. Um, Data scientists, we use uh, deep learning technology to use a security application. So, uh, today, I would like to uh, talk about the data science project life cycle um, and uh, also a little bit about you know, the skill set. Uh, digital for the product manager, the system architect, you know, um, also the higher managers, you know, when uh, their project, you know, they want to build their team, so they have to, you know, go through the whole, uh, learn a little bit about the whole project cycle, and also help, you know, the, the people, you know, Also, you know, for the people who want to, you know, work as a data scientist. Okay, so um, data science project life cycle. That is uh, the whole process, you know, when we build a data science, you know, project. The output from the from this project is a recommendation system, fraud detection system. Whatever you know, uh, the business you know project, you have to go through a uh, project you know life cycle. It starts from business requirements, the data acquisition, the data preparation, modeling, evaluation, then you deploy to the production line and collect data from the operations and then get the feedback from the system and optimize your models there. This is the whole project um, life cycle. And uh, when I was in school, my major is artificial intelligence. I did some uh, research in data mining. At that time, you know, data mining is a technology about, you know, find the patterns, the insight from the data. But data science is, is a little, you know, different. I talked with Cal a couple of times about, you know, it totally starts from business requirements. When I do the consulting work, you know, uh, some startup company they don't have any data yet, but we help them to build, you know, data science uh, system there from really scratch. We help them to collect the data, build the models there. So uh, for the data scientists, you know, we need to work closely with the business people the product manager, the PGM, and we need to learn the business, understand the data there. And also, you know, the first step is we need to specify the business requirements for this particular, you know, project. So, you know, we have a data, we have a project, it's about healthcare. We got uh, 15 million requests from multiple you know, hospitals. And uh, the purpose for that project is, you know, we want to build a model for readmissions. Readmission is a case that, you know, when the patient has been released from the hospital, but unfortunately, you know, they, they come back. That is a key value to, you know, to evaluate the health system, the hospitals evaluated their, you know, quality. But unfortunately, you know, in our team, we don't have anyone who has healthcare background. So we spend a lot of time, you know, talk with the, you know, the doctors, the operations, the staffs, you know, to understand what is their business. For instance, you know, 
DSCWT. I don't know that at all. But you know, you need to learn what that means, and then to use that as a feature when you fit into the machine learning model. Then, so the first step, you know, we learn the, the data, and then we learn the business, and then we specify the requirements. The requirements is, you know, we want to, you know, a prediction model to uh, forecast the uh, real emission. So to help the hospitals to improve. <coughs> okay. So after we have the business requirements, the next step, you know, we need to find the data. Where where the data we can use. So a lot of a company they already have the production line. So for instance, you know, Amazon, they have millions, millions of orders. Symantec, you know, we have a lot of you know data from our clients. Okay. And but we, we also, you know, uh, can find the data from other, you know, parties. You can purchase third-party data. You know, when we working on the healthcare project, we purchase data from the hospitals, and also we can use social network, Facebook, LinkedIn, and also you can build web crawler to download data. And also, you know, we have a lot of, you know, open source there. You know, the open data is a big, you know, project. Open data there are. You can find a lot of data there. So after we find the data, the challenge for the data part is, you know, how you can store your data and manage the data from different, you know, resources. But we are, you know, we are lucky because, you know, in the past 20 years, the open source big data infrastructure had to spark, help us to store all the data there, right? Each file has three copies, you know. Um, also, they have, you know, Hive, you know, have a system that, you know, use the SQL uh, syntax to help you to deal with Hadoop. You don't, you don't need to learn Java things. You can just use Hive to operate the big data infrastructure. So you will see the data source came from you know, your legacy system, your old lab system, your web crawler, your open source, your third party data, and then we put all these things, different you know, structure, you know, structure data, and structure data, we put them into Hadoop Spark. And then we can you know, uh, extract the data from this you know, data lake, use a small part of the data for the analysis. So all the companies, they use these layouts to manage their you know, data system. Okay, so we have, after we save the data into the you know, other system, so we, we will prepare the data set so we can build the models. So it's all about you know, the quality of your data. So you have to clean your data there. For instance, you know, some of my students, they were working on the Airbnb project. You know, when they deal with the, the value of the older age, the age should be turned zero to 100, but they found 1,994, this value in their age, you know, uh, values. It's kind of weird, right? So we figured out why. Because there is a bug in Airbnb system, they take the year as the age, so it's totally wrong. Okay, so your first job is you know find something wrong in your data and clean up. So the challenge for the data preparation part is you know do the integration. Like I said, you know you can do crawler, you can buy data from third party, you can have data from your current system but how you can link them together. But that's the tough part. Okay, ETL gives us the, the process to load the data, but you need to figure out the correlation between all the data sources. And the next step is, you know, uh, feature engineering, feature engineering, okay. A lot of, you know, data scientists spend you know, a lot of time in the, you know, data feature engineering. We use uh, we can use some you know uh, brainstorming. We did a lot of you know, brainstorming in our team to figure out the features we can use. Also, we use some you know algorithm to generate features uh, automatically. 
So whatever you use, you have a initial you know, uh, data set for the features, and then you research the features, you do some tests, you try different algorithm, the modeling, and then you change the, the test set. This is a cycle. We do a lot of you know, work to test, validate, and uh, create a new and a job the other one. It take a while. And then, you know, uh, you go next step, you know, you have all the, you know, features that you do the modeling. Okay, the first question is which model you will use. Okay, I borrow a chart from... Second well, they have a beautiful chart to help you to figure out, you know, which algorithm you should use. The quality for your data application is totally depends on first, your data quality, the second, your uh, features. The third is your modeling, the algorithm to model the process. So a lot of you know the case, you know, we we choose the model based on the business, you know, requirements. For instance, you know, if you build um, user segmentation, you can use clustering. If you uh, build a recommendation system, you can use classifications. If you deal with social network, I think a graph database is a good one. You can use you know, a lot of you know, modeling algorithms algorithm in a you know, graph database. So after we build the models, so finally we want to put that into uh, production. Right. So at this point, you know, you can deal with. Uh, you have to, you know, learn something about, you know, lambda architecture. That's the architecture used in a lot of, you know, companies. They build large scale data applications. Lambda architecture. We have three tiers. The first tier is, you know, batch processing. Like, you know, in Amazon, you know, the save a lot of you know logs from their old lab system and put that into their you know data backend and process that you know as a batch process and also we need some real-time data pipeline to deal with some particular case for instance you know when amazon do the recommendation they need to collect your keywords you put on the search bar right the order you just put so all these kind of data should go along the real-time data pipeline to fit into the recommendation system. And the U application, U model should put into the service layer, just you know, like we, uh, we saw in the, at the middle of the chart. Okay, so I quickly you know, go through the whole process for a data application project. And uh, for the higher managers, you know, when they, you know, build a team, they are looking for different, you know, skill set. Um, thank you, you know, uh, Kayan helped me to build this beautiful chart. Uh, we need uh, statics. You know, we need some engineer to build the data virtualization, you know, the dashboard. And also, uh, we, we need software engineer to build you know, the products. We need a data scientist to do the machine learning. We need you know, data engineer to process the data, to collect the data. And also we need data scientists, you know, the product manager to do the communications. And also we need the domain expertise you know, to teach us you know, the healthcare domain, learn you know, all the business there. So, if you want to work as a data application project, you know you can find a lot of you know opportunities from the very you know uh, bottom. The first stage, you know, when we do the business requirements, you know, uh, if you came from a business, you know, uh, major, you can try to you know uh, figure out you know 
the problem and then you know uh, clean up you know the business requirements and then talk with the data scientists right and for the data engineer you can do data collection you can do data processing and now some of the data scientists they also you know working on this part they spend a lot of time and then we do the modeling, we do machine learning, we do uh, descriptive statics modeling, and uh, we do uh, data visualization, Tableau or some other you know technologies. That is the whole you know process. There are a lot of you know um, opportunities for data scientists, data engineer, business analysis, product manager, you know. So that's pretty much you know what I want to talk. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, I know we have a break after this talk. Uh, we can you know, talk during the, the break. And uh, thank you all. I will pass.